What is the history of morality and what are its effects on our ways of life? I am Rodrigo Gim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. The Genealogy of Morals is an 1887 book by the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. Today I will continue the series with the fourth video about the second essay of the book. In the beginning of the second essay, Nietzsche does a genealogy of punishment and of the idea of the equivalence between injury and pain. He looks to the beginnings of this idea that punishment should be about doing harm or provoking pain in those that are punished, as a compensation for injuries committed. He shows how this idea came about from a long-standing correlation between creditor and debtor. In primitive societies, the creditors were the ancestors, those one was always in debt with, because they provided the living with the means to live with life itself, even. Some of this creditor-debitor relation, according to Nietzsche, was also formative of the relation between a community and its god or gods. The creditors were compensated with the suffering of the debtors, their sacrifice, even. In this genealogy that Nietzsche makes, Punishment originated in the pleasure of making one suffer. And this pleasure of making debtors suffer paid for the debt. Creditors had pleasure in making their debtors suffer. Not only that, this suffering had a pedagogical effect in human instincts. Humans started to equate suffering and forms of rationality. The rational individual was in part a consequence of the pedagogical and instinctual effect of punishment. So Nietzsche, against the grain of 19th century philosophy that tried to explain reason as a progress of human achievement, here gives a genealogy of reason as a result of cruelty, of the inflicted pain that made the human body register itself as an individual body that had to live within limits. Reason came about in part as a result of this register of suffering on the body. So, one could add, it is no wonder that so many people nowadays still link reason and knowledge to suffering. Nietzsche is showing that not only ideas like reason or conscience have a history, but that they also have social ties to the ways that societies live their social relations. Reason or conscience have been propagated as things in themselves, as originators of themselves, but Nietzsche, through his genealogy, shows that they have multiple origins, they are always somehow a copy of other things, and that without cruelty, without making one suffer pain, maybe reason and conscience would not come up as objects for thought, because their possibilities for life would not have been established. Says Nietzsche, citation. Punishment is supposed to possess the value of awakening the feeling of guilt in the guilty person. One seeks in it the actual instrumentum of that psychical reaction called bad conscience or sting of conscience. End of citation. A sting of conscience is thus the effect of punishment that produces subjects with a bad conscience, with a feeling of guilt. The feeling of guilt was produced in subjects. This interiority of the subject who feels guilt, who judges himself, was a historical production. And punishment with suffering, one of its techniques of production. Guilt was produced on a scale unknown before. The debtor had an enormous load to carry, he had guilt forever. 
he was to be eternally guilty because eternally capable of committing crimes. Says Nietzsche, citation, Now the concepts of debt and duty should rebel, but against whom? Undoubtedly, it is first and foremost against the debtor, in whom the bad conscience takes root, infiltrates and increases, growing like a polyp in length and depth, until suddenly we find ourselves before the paradoxical and horrible expedient in which tormented humanity found a momentary relief, that stroke of genius of Christianity. God himself sacrificing himself for the guilt of man. God himself paying himself. God as the only one who can redeem man from that for man himself became irredeemable. The creditor sacrificing for his debtor, for love. Is it to be believed for the sake of his debtor? End of citation. The geniusness of Christianity was to make God himself pay for the unpayable debt, the guilt of Christians. Thus, if God himself was paying for all the debt, the guilt of the world, Christians should be thankful for anything and endure anything and devalue everything but God. God remained as the only value, while life was further devalued, and God as existent, God as being in the world, the world as God, was killed in the name of Christian morality, in the name of a moral obligation that can only be paid for with death, the death of God and the death of the Christian himself. God as a value against life itself. That generated, as Nietzsche says, citation, the will of man to find himself guilty and reprehensible to a degree that can never be atoned for, his will to think himself punished without any possibility of the punishment becoming equal to the guilt. End of citation. With debt and guilt never being paid for, one's life and existence is devalued, it is unworthy with multiple effects for all of the world we now live in. Well, people, that's it for the second essay of the book. Next week, we will discuss the third essay. And of course, we have no intention here of talking about all that Nietzsche said in the book because we make our choices and interpretations. Please support my work on Patreon if you can. Subscribe to the channel and see you next Thursday.